guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snails, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our bleeding and coagulation playlist, and today we'll talk about liver disease, so let's get started. Let me answer the question of the previous video. You had two patients with vitamin K deficiency. Patient A had vitamin K deficiency due to a parenchymal liver disease, but patient B had vitamin K deficiency due to a malabsorption syndrome. The question is, as a hematologist or a lab scientist, how can you tell the difference between patient A and patient B? And here's the answer. You order factor 5 in the plasma. If it's low, it's liver disease. If it's normal, it's a vitamin K malabsorption. Because remember vitamin K, what was the factors? 2, 7, 9, and 10. So basically, you pick any factor other than 2, 7, 9, and 10. If it's low, liver disease, because all of the factors come from the liver, with the exception of factor 8. Normal, this is vitamin K malabsorption. Today we're talking liver disease. Where do you think the problem is? Yep, number three here, the coagulation cascade or secondary hemolysis because most of the factor come from the liver. That if you are a mediocre student. If you are an excellent student, you'll tell me, oh, but when we have liver disease, we will have a low level of TPO, thrombopoietin, and therefore decreased platelets, so it can affect primary hemostasis as well. Perfect. Okay, if liver disease affects secondary hemostasis, expect a prolongation of PT and PTT. Is primary hemostasis affected in liver disease? Could be due to decreased level of thrombopoietin, which will decrease polluted count called thrombocytopenia, although most commonly it's mild. Okay, most of these factors come from the liver. If I have liver disease, I will have decreased level of these factors, which will lead to inability to form fiber and fibers, secondary hemostasis is toast. What are the factors that do not come from the liver? Okay, tissue factor, baby, is considered to be factor three. It does not come from the liver, it comes from the freaking tissue, the endothelium. How about calcium? Calcium is considered to be factor four and it does not come from the liver. How about factor eight? Factor eight mostly comes from the endothelium, and we need some von Willebrand factor, which comes from platelets. And endothelium, remember the vipal palladi bodies. So all these factors come from the liver, except the tissue factor, the ionized calcium, and factor eight. If you are a PhD student, factor 13 has many subunits. The A subunit does not come from the liver. It comes from the bone marrow. That's medicine right there, baby. Okay, which one is affected in liver disease? Both, but most importantly, the secondary hemostasis. Expect deep bleeding, hemarthrosis, muscle hematoma, brain hemorrhage, splinter hemorrhage, latery bleeding, bleeder anthra, etc. All of this stuff can happen in liver disease, and don't forget that thrombocytopenia can happen, which can lead to superficial bleeding. Please don't forget that the liver is responsible for the gamma carboxylation of some coagulation factors, including 2, 7, 9, and 10. Remember that gamma carboxylation is an example of post-translational modification of proteins. That's an exam question right there. We have a pharmacology marathon on my Facebook page. Please come and join us. We have many questions there. Before we talk about liver disease, let's bust some myths. Myth number one, thrombocytopenia uh, is the same thing as increased risk of bleeding. So for instance, if I have two patients, patient A with a platelet count of 150,000, and patient B with plate count of 120,000, therefore patient B is more likely to bleed than patient A. What a bunch of nonsense. No, not true. Clinically speaking, we do not start to care about your plated count until it drops below 50,000. Even then, you might not bleed. Thrombocytosis is the same thing as thrombophilia, which means I have increased risk of thrombosis. For instance, if I have patient A with plate count of 400,000 and patient B with a plate count of 510,000, therefore patient B is more likely to thrombose than patient A. What a load of trash! There is a difference between thrombocytosis, which is increased platelet count, and thrombophilia, which is thrombosis. These are not the same. In fact, most patients with high platelet count are absolutely fine and living the dream. Myth number three. If a patient is having liver disease, I suppose that this patient is automatically anti coagulated, which means a patient A has normal liver, no bleeding risk, but if patient B has liver disease, therefore, I'm absolutely sure that there is bleeding or anticoagulation. That's a bunch of bilge water. If I have liver disease, I could be suffering from bleeding 
or thrombosis or neither or even both a condition that's very similar to DIC more on that later myth number four. Oh, because the patient has liver disease therefore the plate count is going to be abnormal bleeding time will be abnormal PT will be abnormal and PTT will be abnormal nonsense these are old archaic tests they are good but not for liver disease you need more sophisticated tests for that so it's expected that a patient with liver disease could have abnormal tests or normal tests myth number five liver disease therefore the most accurate test is plate count and bleeding time no there's these are not the most accurate tests stop it myths like these is what makes you kill the patient so wake up it's time for us healthcare workers to get our heads out of our collective sphincters. So let's learn the facts. Thrombocytopenia is not the same as bleeding. Thrombocytosis is not the same as thrombophilia. Liver disease is not the same as O2 anticoagulated. Liver disease is not the same as abnormal platelet count. Liver disease, therefore the most accurate tests are not platelet count. The most accurate tests in fact are thromboelastography and thromboelastometry. Everything is balanced, by the way. Too much hemostasis, you thrombose. Too little hemostasis, you bleed. Balance is bueno. A tale of two petals. Every protein was procoagulant. Every protein was anticoagulant. Okay, okay, whatever. Procoagulant proteins secreted by the liver include thrombin, coagulation factors, and platelets. Platelets do not come from the liver, but you know, TPO comes from the liver. Okay, these are procoagulants. However, the same liver will secrete the breaks of the coagulation. Anticoagulants, thrombomodulin. Yeah, when thrombin binds thrombomodulin, thrombin will cease being procoagulant and will start to be an anticoagulant. That's why it has been modulated. Think, people. Protein C and S are the breaks of the coagulation cascade, specifically the breaks of factor 5 and 8. Heparin is a naturally occurring anticoagulant. You have heparin right now. But I do not go to the doctor and nobody prescribed heparin to me. I know, baby. You have heparin right now. It's natural. So physiologically, your liver secretes procoagulants, which will lead to thrombosis, and anticoagulants, which will lead to bleeding. The key is the balance. However, if you have liver disease or liver failure or cirrhosis, your liver is toast. Therefore, you are not secreting procoagulants or anticoagulants for that matter. Therefore, you will bleed or you will thrombose or you will have both. So when I have liver disease, do not assume that I am automatically bleeding. No, 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 no. I have a rebalanced hemostasis and this can lead to bleeding or thrombosis or both a condition similar to DIC. So what do we call it then? AICF, accelerated intravascular coagulation and fibrinolysis. My liver is toast, therefore no TPO, no platelets, I get thrombocytopenia and I bleed. No coagulation factors, I bleed. No anticoagulants such as protein C and protein S, I thrombose. No fibrinolytic proteins, the clot is here to stay, no one is gonna dissolve it, and therefore I'm gonna thrombose more. Both of them can happen together, a condition known as AICF, acute intravascular coagulation and fibrinolysis. Okay, what are the symptoms of liver disease? Could be bleeding, could be thrombosis, could be both. How do I diagnose it? Forget about plated count, bleeding time, PT and PTT. You need the most accurate tests, which are thromboelastography and thromboelastometry. How do we manage liver disease? If the PTINR is prolonged and vitamin K is so low, maybe it's time to give vitamin K. If the bleeding time is prolonged and plate count is so low, maybe it's time to give plates. Thrombin time is prolonged, which means there is a problem in the common pathway. Fibrinogen is very low, maybe it's time to give fibrinogen. We give it as cryoprecipitate or fresh frozen plasma if you don't have cryoprecipitate. Cryoprecipitate is basically fibrinogen. Fresh frozen plasma is everything. If PTINR is prolonged, PTT is prolonged, coagulation factors are non-existent, maybe it's time to give the coagulation factor. If you have deficiency of factor 8, give 8. If you have problem with 8, 9, 11, 12, give 8, 9, 11, 12, or fresh frozen plasma. If D-dimer is high and fibrin degradation products or fibrin split products are high, which means we have fibrinolysis. Lots of fibrinolysis. Therefore, you give anti-fibrinolytic therapy, which we have discussed before. Tranexamic acid and epsilonamino-caparoic acid. 
We still have six discounts available. Use the promo code antibiotics25 to get 25% towards my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. Let's add liver disease to our glorious table. Plated count could be low, bleeding time could be high. How about PT and PTT? These are prolonged. It's also acceptable to say normal plated count, normal bleeding time, prolonged PT and PTT. Let's talk about vitamin K. This is from Picmonic, baby. Vitamin K, K for king, dark leafy green vegetables. Vitamin K is also synthesized by your intestinal flora. Vitamin K is activated by the famous enzyme epoxide reductase, shown here by the epoxy side red duck. Vitamin K is responsible for the gamma carboxylation, which is a post-translational modification of factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, protein C, cat, and S, snake. Vitamin K deficiency can happen if you take broad-spectrum antibiotics. It's also common in newborn because their gut is sterile and it does not have bacteria yet. Don't forget that warfarin inhibits vitamin K, but please do not say, oh, warfarin is just a vitamin K receptor antagonist. Nonsense. It's not a receptor antagonist. Warfarin just inhibits the epoxide reductase enzyme, which is necessary to activate vitamin K. But this is not a classic traditional receptor antagonist in pharmacology wake up. We have two types of vitamin K, K1 and K2. Let's talk about vitamin K1. Here is the king number one. Why do we need it? Two, seven, nine, and ten. These are coagulation factors coming out of the factory, which is your liver. We use vitamin K clinically to treat hypo, hippo, prothrombinemia, prophylaxis in newborns, purple axis newborn, and it's an antidote for warfarin, the warfairy. Side effects of vitamin K are extremely rare. They can include shock, kernecterus, and cardiac arrest. Vitamin K is fat soluble and therefore you need some bile salts in order to be able to absorb it. Do not give it IV because there is increased risk of side effect. Because as you know, when you give something intravenously, the bioavailability is almost 100%. The previous two slides were from Picmonic. Go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis. Question of the day. You have two patients with simultaneous thrombosis and bleeding. One of them have DIC. The other one have accelerated intravascular coagulation and fibrin lysis. When you did these tests, both of them had the same results. Low plated count, prolonged bleeding time, prolonged PT, and prolonged PTT. How can you differentiate between the two? Let me know the answer in the comment section. You will find the correct answer in the next video where we will talk about DIC, baby. So please subscribe, hit the bell to get notified and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my antibiotics course. Go to Picmonic where medicine is really fun and easy to remember. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense.